Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to set up a web API project using .NET 6. We're going to use code first, then migrations to set up tables inside of SQL Server. Hope you enjoy this video. I'll be using Visual Studio's 2022. Let's do this. First of all, we're going to say file new project. Notice at the top, C Sharp Windows Web. In the list, find ASP.NET Core Web API. Press the next button. Let us name this project Sample Code First EF. Under Frameworks, choose .NET 6.0. Under None, just do the first checkbox, Configure for HTTPS. Then press Create. The project has been created, and it created two additional files that we just don't need. Delete the highlighted entries. Now for this project to work correctly, notice that we have to have several packages installed. Let's learn how to do that. Right click on packages, say manage NuGet packages. And then notice it says browse, installed or update. Let's stay on browse. And then you just want to work down this list. Microsoft Entity Framework Core, Core Design, Core SQL Server, Core Tools. Microsoft Extensions Configuration, and Configuration Manager. So get those packages installed, and then we can begin building this application. Good luck with that. So this is our solution. This is the project. Come inside your project, and let's create a folder called Entities. Remember, this is a code first project. Here are our four entities. Notice our database task manager does not have any tables. They are going to be created from the source code of this project. That is what we call code first. Now that I had my entity names, task user history and status code, it was time to put some attributes associated with each. Notice it took me several attempts to get a good set of fields. And in just a moment, you will see how we design this up in our entity classes. Let's now create our entities. Notice that I have four files here. You need to create each one of these, history, status code, task, and user. Those are the standard C-sharp class objects. Inside of class history, notice I'm using my two usings, add those, and then we're gonna have a HID, a task ID, a user ID, a node, and a create date. Notice that I'm going to be making this first column HID my primary key and an identity column. Task ID and user ID are both nullable. And then we're going to say for node is required and its max length is 132 and create date is also required. And there you have history. Our next class, status code, notice that we have a code and a description, both are of type string. We're going to say code is our primary key and max length of three. Description is required and max length of 20. Notice that we only have one using clause, and that is status code. In our next entity task, notice we have two using statements, system, component model, data annotations, and schema. So we say class task, and then we have a task ID, which is not only our primary key, but it's going to be an identity column. Then we have title, it's required, and it is a 48 character field. Due date, date time required. Assign to is an integer, but nullable. So that means it's not required. And then notice status code, we're saying it's required. And I'm going to get back to this foreign key in just a moment. And then notice what we have a date complete is a nullable date time. And then a created by is required. So there we have task. I'll get back to this on our second pass when we're using migration so we can see the difference. And our last class object is user. User has two using statements. And then we have user ID, which is the primary key and an identity column. 
And then we have a first name, last name, cell phone, and email. They are all required. And the max length for first name and last name, 32, cell phone 20, and email address 132. To finish that up is member sense, is active and can reassign, all are required, date time and two bulls. And there you have the user entity. Let's make sure we do a save all because we're about to do migrations and build the tables inside of SQL Server. Let's perform a checklist to make sure data migrations will be successful. Let's start with data context. Now notice it says class data context. I have my constructor and then I have a list of my objects. And you'll notice one thing that's different. Now it says user task instead of just task. Well, task is a reserve word and they use it with threading. And I didn't want any mistakes to happen. So what I did is I renamed it and I renamed it to user task. Notice in my entities that used to just say task, now it says user task. We have remain, renamed the class object. So take those steps and just rename that, and then let's continue. Now notice it says date db set history. That is the name of this object. And then we do the plural of this class object. Status code to status code, user task to user task, user to users. And there is data context. To build a connection string, we're going to need two pieces of information. We're going to need the server name, so type in select add at server name, highlight that, and then hit the execute button. That is our server name. Now our database that we're going to be using is this one called task manager. Then pop over to the app settings.json. The key thing here is this connection string, default connection. Notice I say server, and this is the name of my SQL server instance. The database name is called task manager. My username and password are software nuggets and I'm going to allow multiple active result sets equals true. So make sure that your connection string is done correctly. Kind of looks just like mine, except the user, the password, and of course your database and your server name. So they're pretty much totally different. Now you'll notice that underneath uh, app settings.json, there is app settings development JSON. Let's make sure that same connection string is set up appropriately there as well. Our last file to examine is program CS. Notice on line 10, let's make sure that we have builder.services add db context. This is the name of our class object. And then say option, then option.use SQL Server. Then we're going to use a builder configurator configuration dot get connection string default connection was the name of our key inside of our app file make sure that's all set up and then guess what we're going to be able to run migrations so let's do this uh, view other windows and come down to package manager and then here what we're going to say is dot net then ef migration add initial and then hit enter then you'll notice when this is done we're going to get two files over here in our migration folder and they kind of look like this now this first one is going to be a list of our tables let's make this smaller so we can see it so we have histories status codes users and user task so those are going to be the tables that we're going to make does that make sense? Nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the second part and we're going to actually apply this script to SQL Server. Notice in SQL Server, I'll do a refresh here. There are no tables. So when we get done with this next command, we're going to have four tables there. 
So the next command is going to be .NET, EF, and then say database, and then update, and then hit enter. Then give that a moment to run. And once that's done, you'll get all the commands that it executed. So at the very top, notice it said started, succeeded, and then here's all the actions it performed. Now let's go look at our database. So look what we have here, histories, status codes, users, and user task. Got our columns, got our primary key, Let's look at this one table, see if we have our identity column. Notice when this comes over and HID, you can scroll down to the properties and notice here it a uh, data type integer, identity yes, incrementing one by one. So that works perfect. Now earlier I said I would get back to this foreign key but look at how this will automatically generate for it. I'm using the class object's name here as our data type. And I have this foreign key and I said, I want you to be related to code in the table called status code. So this right here, as you will see, is optional. But what it does is it'll, it shows me as a programmer that this is what happens. Notice in the user task, I have that one column called status code. Down here at the bottom, we have a constraint and notice that we have a foreign key constraint. Well, that foreign key constraint mapped those two tables together just because of the object name. You have to admit that's pretty impressive. And there you have it team, a web API project using code first. That means uh, we kind of like uh, don't have a database yet. We're going to build it up. We're going to use our entity classes and then we're going to like uh, migrate it to SQL Server. Now there is some complexity here. For instance, if you're not uh, very familiar with SQL Server, you need to be able to install a local version on your computer, either the uh, express version or the other version. I think they're both free, you know, for small databases. And then just make sure you save the username and password and the uh, server name, and that will get that connection string going. Now the next complexity is all these packages. You know, Entity Framework is actually quite large, so make sure you install all those packages. Do step-by-step -step that I've done inside this program, and you should be successful. Now in my next video, we're going to be using those tables, and we're going to learn how to use Entity Framework to insert, update, delete, pretty much the CRUD operation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you supporting my channel. Uh, please give a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. Uh, comment if you have any questions or comments to give to other users. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and want to follow because uh, you like the way I do it, uh, please consider subscribing. Other than that, have a great day and a great week. We'll see you back in my next video.